Hey everybody and welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me today. In this video, we're going to expand on our existing code by adding some new classes. Before we get started, I just wanted to say a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed to this channel and hit the notification icon. That really helps me out. And a huge thank you to my patrons and members. Your names will be running across the bottom of the screen as we speak. So let's get right into this. So obviously we're going to need to go to our classes rpy where we've got our previous two classes and what we're going to do is we're going to append to this file rather than putting all of our classes at the top and then declaring the variables what i prefer to do in this case is to keep the declarations free class fairly kind of close so that when we need to look back we haven't got to keep going up and down or searching through different files so the first class we're going to define by typing class is going to be person um, but not the same person that we have for our character so this one is going to be n person and obviously it's going to be an object like that and then when we initialize this class we're going to decide here what our variables are going to be so the first thing we have to type is self now, if you've got a really complicated idea for a game in mind where all of the characters have lots and lots and lots of different stats, this is where you're going to put them. For the sake of this exercise, I'm going to keep it really simple. We're going to give them a name. We're going to give them a... Sorry, we're going to give them a forename. We're going to give them a surname. We're going to give them a location and we're going to give them a love stat. But that's just a number. It's, it could be referencing anything, so it doesn't have to necessarily be love. It could be just a point system. It's just an easy word to remember. So we're going to say self dot forename equals forename, self dot surname equals surname, self dot location equals location, and self.love equals love. And we'll spell that correctly like that. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another property by adding the property decorator to the top of this one. And we're going to say def name. And it's gonna be self like that. Now we're going to create our variable name so we're going to say return and we're going to have one set of curly braces and then another set of curly braces like that and then we're going to take dot format open brackets and we're going to say self dot forename comma self dot surname and all that means is that if we ask for their full name, it will give us the forename and the surname together. Whereas we can just have forename or surname. And this makes it easier if you've got a game with a lot of different people in it to identify them by family or some other category. You could have sort of their job title or something in there instead. And that would just allow you to be able to kind of locate a specific group of people or to identify a specific group of people at any one time. So that's our first class created. So the last thing that we need to do is obviously we need to create a dialogue class so that we can call on dialogues dependent on where we are and who's local and so on. So we're going to define a new class and this one's going to be dialogue, all capitals, and it's going to be an object. And when we define the init, first thing has to be self. So we need to decide what's going to trigger our dialogues. And the first thing we need to do is obviously we need to add a location so that the dialogues only happen in a location. But we can set a check in there to say if it equals none, then it will happen anywhere. And then we can have a participant, which 
Again, we can set that to none if we need to. If the dialogue is kind of part of a narrative or something and there's no specific participant, we can add none to that as well. Now, if you are using a time of day kind of mechanism, you could add the time to this dialogue as well. Um, but we're not doing that in this de in this game. We're just having if the right person is in the right place, then it will trigger. So now what I want to do is I'm going to add a chain of events kind of system and the sequence number. So just to explain once more, the location means that the dialogue will only happen if the player is in the correct place. The participant will mean that the dialogue will only happen if the correct character is in the room. The chain it means we can put together chains of events and sequence means that we can identify what number in that chain of events this dialogue is and that's so that we don't have to declare them necessarily in the correct order if we want to you know do them more hickledy pickledy we can do and that's what we need for this one for now so we'll say self dot location self dot participant self dot chain self dot sequence now we have to make sure we spell that correctly and then we just say at the end of this each one equals location equals participant equals chain equals sequence like that marvelous now what we want to do for this class is we need to have another property so we're going to add a property that could take the decorator and we're going to call this one just check that's supposed to say def check like that and all we're going to be doing in this is checking that the player is in the correct location and the participant if any is in there so in order for this check to work first thing we have to do is underneath our in a person is we need to create a list of npcs and they can all have default values for now so it doesn't matter but we need to have a list that we're going to search through so all we're going to do is we're going to create our npc list like that and then we're going to fill that list with a bunch of empty values so what i'm going to do is i could create a loop but for the purposes of this exercise i'm not going to so i'm going to say npc zero better still actually npc dot append and we're going to give it an n person and we're going to just give this person the name of Danielle and her surname will be Smith. Yep. And her location will be the library and her love points will be zero because we've not met yet. So all we have to do is copy this line and we'll do like five of them and they'll all just be the same value for now. It doesn't matter because we're not actually using these. These are just kind of placeholders for when we do want to add our characters in. So now what we're going to do is we're going to say global because we need to include variables from outside the class in this. So we're going to say global location because we need the location. And we need global NPC because we need to access our list of NPCs. So the checks are going to be fairly simple. We're going to say for q in npc if q dot location equals self dot location then what we're doing is saying if the npc is in the location of we actually need to say the current location that's that's that part done so we're checking that the participant is present in fact what we should probably do first is if q dot name equals 
self dot for name. So we're saying if the person, so we're looking for the correct person first. And now we're saying if they're in the lo right location, then we return true. Otherwise, we come back to the very start and we just say return false. So now we can say that di uh, the dialog has a new property called check, which will return true if the correct person is in the correct location. Otherwise, it will return false. And that's all there is to it in this, in this episode. I'm not adding any more to this because the logic that kind of follows up from this is a little bit convoluted and I don't want to give too much in one hit because people will get lost. And the whole point of this series is that you understand what we're doing rather than just copying it parrot fashion. So thank you very much for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye bye. Thank <laughs> you.